Hey guys, this is a quick follow-up video to my recent video on vintage television alignment test equipment. These are some honorable mentions, some runner-ups in the sweep generator category. On top we have a model 415 B and K solid state sweep marker generator. I didn't include this for one reason. It can only do the 44 megahertz IF. However, it does it very nicely, has some nifty features. I didn't include it in my workbench because it can only do the 44 megahertz IF and it's kind of big. But it is solid state, it's well engineered, it works well. Uh, one other little quirk though is it does use some oddball connectors. They use some amphenol connectors for the scope and uh, the DMOD probe. However, you can swap these out to BNC pretty readily and they do use BNC for the output and the external marker, go figure. Something else uh, to consider is uh, on this vintage piece of equipment and a lot of other vintage sweep generators, they have some somewhat specialized cables and probes. If you want to get one of these, really uh, try to get one that has the probes. They're not too hard to, to make up on your own if you need to, but it's nice to get the originals. So for example, this I believe is the RF out, and you can either choose 75 or 300 ohm termination. The DMOD probe I believe has a crystal uh, diode in it to uh, you know, convert RF into, uh, uh, into uh, DC or uh, rectify it anyways. Um, so this, uh, unlike the Suncor uh, SM152 I did recently, this uses crystals for the markers. And conveniently it has a flip top so you can get right in there and see what's going on. So, the SM152 Suncor, which can also do very similar uh, functionality, uh, that used LC tank circuits for the markers. This has crystals. They are tunable though, so you can tweak it, but with the crystals you get the added stability. As you can see it's all solid state. Why is it in such a large cabinet? I think they just reused existing cabinets from the B&K 1077 which is also a nifty device but that's a pattern generator but it uses exactly the same cabinet. That is a hinged lid for a very good reason because you want to put in slides for your test patterns. You really don't need to ever get in here. Well hopefully you don't because <laughs> you don't have to you don't want to have to calibrate this too often. I've never done anything to mine. I got it in very good condition in the original box with all the cables. It looks like it had never been used. So what can this do? Well, this can sweep the 44 megahertz IF. It can sweep the chroma bandpass. And I think it can do um, sound or maybe not. Like, yeah, I can do 10.7 megahertz sound. TV sound, which would be 4.5 megahertz. And it has three or two rather uh, RF channels, four and 10. 10 being the higher bands, so it'll be a couple hundred megahertz and channel four is around 60 megahertz. Uh, you adjust the center frequency here. <laughs> no numbers or anything, you just get this thumb wheel and uh, little indicators here and this controls your sweep width, no numbers or anything. So you really need to be looking at your XY display when you're manipulating these. Uh, and here's where you pick what mode, whether you're sweeping video, IF, um, just, a, just a marker frequency. So this can do a CW, continuous wave, if you're on just marker. So it'll just put out 44 megahertz, for example. Then your RF channels are 10.7. You have uh, some oscilloscope uh, controls. Um, and it has a built-in bias supply. You get three bias voltages, three independent uh, DC power supplies. Again, no display, nothing, just three knobs. I would definitely want to back that up with a DC voltmeter. And you get this really nifty display up here. When you turn these markers on, different lights light up. <laughs> so if I was just going to do 44 megahertz and, uh, and the other various features, I would have put this up in lieu of the wave text, but it loses out. Let me plug it in so you can see what those lights look, out, look like. Here it is, powered up. A little gimmicky maybe, but you do get these nice little lights that show you when the marker is turned on or off. Now I have used this a couple times and I noted that the key frequency points indicated in the alignment instructions did not necessarily line up 
with the ones built into this device. So, uh, generally speaking, it's very handy for 44 megahertz, but it might not match your alignment instructions perfectly. Something to, to be aware of. However, if you see one of these, it looks clean, you have the cables, you get a, a good deal on it. By all means, it is a nice little device. Now, below that, we have a classic HP 33. 36A synthesized level generator. It is a digital sweep generator, the only one I have in my arsenal where you can type in the start frequency, say 10 megahertz, and the stop frequency, say 13 megahertz, and it will sweep between 10 and 13 megahertz. Beautiful, clean sine wave very very precise level control meaning the output level does not vary it just sweeps across the frequencies and you can program a marker into it so why don't i use this i don't think it's up to 21 megahertz <laughs> just below what would be useful for the older tvs it is fantastic for am radio for fm radio if you want to do 455 kilohertz 10.7 megahertz now, yes, there is an external jack on the back that goes to 60 megahertz, but that's only for CW, not for sweeping. If I'm sweeping and I try to put in more than 21 megahertz, it doesn't work. So, <laughs> oh well. Uh, now, mine also has an issue. The output level does not vary. Uh, there's something wrong with it. Um, but at least it's fixed at a high level, so I, I can use it if I loosely couple it or put an external attenuator onto it. Someday I will fix it. I'm going to keep it out here on my workbench to remind myself I need to fix it. Now here's maybe the best feature. It has a knob. It has a knob. We can vary the frequency with the knob. I don't have to type everything in. You can just turn the knob. It may seem like a minor thing until you try using it and type in all these digits every time. Especially when you want to vary the output level, it's nice to have a knob. So again, if you see one of these, inexpensive, you get a good deal on it. They're old, it's from the late 70s, early 80s. It's uh, very obsolete, given that it can only go to 21 megahertz. But they produce a really, really, really nice output. Alright, that's going to be it for now. Uh, Next up, I'm going to actually uh, dive into theory, and then we're going to start using some of this stuff to try to do some alignments.